Unit 14, Section 4. Uh, here we'll take a look at algae in our diet and some uh, harmful algaes. We haven't really talked about the effect of algaes a lot. Um, many algaes, especially the cyanobacteria and seaweeds, are used as food. Um, they have a high proportion of protein, uh, given their volume and have high concentrations of minerals and some vitamins. And some algae um, have a, a precursor or preform of omega-3 oils, which are um, indicated in, in um, health in humans. And uh, by consuming these algae, we get the benefits of those. Um, spirulina is a blue-green algae that uh, forms filaments. And here we can see the uh, microscopic uh, filaments formed of spirulina. And there are significant amounts of protein available uh, from eating this. Usually, um, because of the small size of these, they're collected um, or grown in huge numbers, um, strained and then pressed into a different form uh, um, such as tablets, which is a, uh, can be used as a dietary supplement. Also, nori, um, commonly used to, uh, as wrapping for, uh, sushis and Dulse. So humans have been consuming algae for a long time. Uh, and algae provide us benefits of uh, plant food and seafood and proteins. Um, but the algae aren't 100% um, good. Um, some species are toxic. Uh, meaning they, they create poisons inside themselves and if consumed uh, can poison the uh, organisms that consume them, that eat them. Um, but even species that are non-toxic can be harmful when conditions cause what's known as an algal bloom. Um, that typically happens when there are high nutrient conditions. Okay, the for instance, um, uh, nutrient runoff from uh, farm fields, um, pumping of, uh, of sewage into waterways, um, that sort of thing, adds huge amounts of nutrients to the water that algae can use as food and causes... Um, an explosion in population, really rapid growth of the algae um, beyond the long-term carrying capacity of the uh, nutrient that's been added to the water. So when the nutrients run out, these algae die. The dead decomposing algae um, cause oxygen to be removed from the water. Um, that lack of oxygen uh, then kills fish and plants in the water and often causes um, foul odors. Um, there are some uh, algal blooms that form from species that are toxic in their own right. And then these blooms can kill uh, animals and humans um, who eat other animals that have been poisoned by this. For instance, uh, filter feeders, mollusks like oysters and clams and that sort of thing, um, just feed by filtering water, uh, taking the nutrients out of it. If they're feeding in an algal bloom of toxic algae, um, they're consuming those toxins, which may not kill them outright. 
but then animals like seals and humans and seagulls then eat those organisms, the clams and the, the mussels and, and the oysters and that sort of thing, and uh, are poisoned. Um, red tides are harmful algal blooms in coastal waters involving uh, the dinoflagellate algaes that have a brown or a red color. Um, but not all algal blooms are harmful, even the red ones. Occasionally, um, the algae will just uh, explode in population um, in, a in a limited area, um, consume excess nutrients, and be dispersed by uh, tides or wave action. Um, so even uh, what we think of as harmful uh, algal blooms not always are. Um, this slide shows a photograph of a red tide. Um, we can see the color tends to be more yellow and orange, but uh, definitely a, a dramatic difference between that and, and the normal water color. Um, finally, we'll look at uh, a different kind of uh, algal problem. It's a killer algae. Um, but not because of uh, toxins um, necessarily. We'll take a look at that. Um, Calerpa, native to tropical waters, um, doesn't have any specialized cells, not a lot of differentiation in the, in the structure of it, but it does resemble plants um, in its morphology or its overall appearance. Um, the Oceanographic Institute of Monaco had some um, and dumped it into the uh, Mediterranean Sea, um, where it took hold. It has no natural enemies there, and nothing uh, stopped it from, from taking hold and growing. Um, it can grow close to an inch a day and completely cover the sea bottom cutting off sunlight and using up the nutrients that native species require. And it's inedible by most herbivores, most plant eaters, because it contains toxic compounds, they simply don't eat it. Um, this has proven to be a huge problem in the uh, Mediterranean. And uh, this stuff is, is sort of a uh, sea-borne version of... Uh, kudzu vine on land. Uh, this photograph here shows uh, the calerpa. It's uh, calerpa taxifolia. And uh, notice it does have a, uh, you know, uh, sort of a plant-like uh, morphology, even though there's not a lot of differentiation in the cells. Um, it's an attractive plant, um, and it was used in aquariums at the, at the Oceanographic Institute, which is why they had it. Um, Dumping it proved to be a big mistake, though. Okay, well, that finishes uh, Unit 14, this section on algaes.